Hi, and welcome back to our vlog of Botswana. In the previous episode, I shared some of our first impressions of Gaborone, Botswana's capital city, which seems to be a place of endless urban sprawl. On the outskirts of the city, though, there are some nice green areas as well. And in this vlog, I will show you the more natural side of Gaps and its surrounding villages. Here we have a map of Gaborone. We are here at the blue dot in what is called Extension 9, one of the many neighborhoods of the city. When you look at the map, one of the things you'll see, notice right away is this big green area, the Gaborone Game Reserve. The reserve is basically a big park where you can do mini safaris in your own car. A few weeks ago, we could borrow a friend's car and went for a visit. Although the reserve is probably nothing compared to the real safari locations, we thought it was very exciting. There's all kind of wildlife and you can get very close to all the animals. At the southern edge of the city, you can find a huge lake. In such a dry country as Botswana, big bodies of water are a rare sight. And this lake is not a natural one. It is formed by the Gabaroni Dam and acts as a large water reservoir for the city. The lake is filled by the Nogotwane River, which flows from south to north and defines a large part of the border with South Africa. The lake and its surrounding beaches are very beautiful and a lovely place to visit. And not far from the lake, you'll find Kale Hill, Cabaroni's highest point. Since Botswana is quite a flat country, especially the area around Cabaroni, the 250 meter high hill really sticks out above the rest of the city. Kale literally means the place that dried up in Setswana which is the main language spoken in Botswana. It's a nice hike to the top of the hill, from where you have wide views over the surroundings. The hill is also a popular workout place for many Botswana. To see the real natural beauty in Botswana, you have to leave the cities, of course. But without a car of your own, this has proven to be a bit hard. Public transport in the country is quite basic. There is one train line from Gaborone to Francistown in the north. But this is mostly used for the transport of goods, not passengers. Buses, on the other hand, are plentiful and travel to most major destinations in the country. Many buses, called combis, are used to get around within the city. They drive around certain routes in the cities and stop for anyone that wants to get on. Using both public transport and a friend's car, we have made a few small day trips to the surrounding villages of Manana, Mogonie, and Mochudi. As soon as you leave the city of Gaborone, the landscape changes drastically. Wide views of green fields full of bushes and small trees, and rolling hills in the distance. Such a nice escape from the busy city and the endless traffic jams in Gaps. In Manana, we visited the ancient rock carvings made by the indigenous inhabitants of Botswana over a thousand years ago. We also saw the huge Livingstone tree, named after the Scottish missionary that settled here in the 1800s. Mochudi, 
a decent sized town just north of Gaps, is known for its traditional houses. The museum we wanted to visit was closed, unfortunately, so we'll have to return. Finally, Mogonye, a tiny hamlet at the edge of a large canyon. Towns like this usually have some cattle posts, and we encountered many cows on our way. We went for a hike into the canyon, which was really cool. Unfortunately, Tiana slipped and fell and muddied her pants. Thanks for watching again, I hope you enjoyed this vlog as well. There will be another one soon in which I'm going to tell you about the car we bought. See you next time!